Welcome back to the tech table. Today I'll be doing a quick demo showing our enhanced support for multi-GPU, which includes eGPU chassis support like this 650 breakaway box from Sonnet. There's a couple things to keep in mind when you're using these Thunderbolt 3 eGPU rigs, and that has to do with hardware. Windows 10 users can either use Nvidia or AMD, while Mac Mojave users currently can only use AMD. Now, Windows users need to pay close attention to GPU drivers and try to stick with the same family of GPU. Believe me, it just makes it easier when you're troubleshooting. For example, if you happen to have a Quadro laptop with a P1000, try to stick with a Quadro desktop. The same goes for GeForce and the same goes for AMD. Mac users actually have it a little bit easier as eGPU driver support for many of these cards is built in, like this WX9100. It really did great in the demo, as you'll see. Remember that we're showing exporting timelines with several GPU effects applied to each layer. I'm trying to show real-world examples of how multi-GPU will work and not just a tech demo of how many effects you can apply. Those actually score fine when you stack them on like that. I just don't think it's very realistic and doesn't really show you real workflow. Lastly, as I state in the demo, there are several factors that you need to keep in mind. Obviously, you need to be using Thunderbolt 3. You got to pay attention to the codecs on the timeline, frame size, sequence size, how many layers of video, the GPU effects that you apply, and the export format or codec that you'll be using. Let's take a closer look and see what this looks like. Let's start by showing you how the project is put together. As I scrub through here, you can see there's a key being applied, there's a blur, a few other things happening to these layers in terms of effects. And if I go over here to the effects controls area and I start to click around, you can see there's some lumetry, as I said, some blurs and other things going on here. So there's a lot of things here to tax the GPU. Let's bring up the activity monitor and take a look at what's going on with the GPU. You'll see that the macOS activity monitor has detected that I have two GPUs in this MacBook Pro, an integrated Intel 630 and an AMD Radeon Pro 560. You'll also notice when I get down on the timeline and I start to scrub this, you'll see that the AMD 560 is hitting at 100% because I'm putting a fairly heavy load on this. And again, it's exactly what I would want to see. Next, let's go ahead and do an export and take a look at the activity monitor and export times to see how well this performs. I'll go ahead and speed this up so we don't have to wait. Total render time was about 3 minutes and 13 seconds. So next I'm going to quit out of Premiere Pro and attach the external GPU via Thunderbolt 3. You can see that the macOS Activity Monitor has now detected three GPUs by adding the AMD Radeon WX9100, which is what's inside of the external GPU chassis. Let's go and start another export and see what those times look like. Total render time with the external GPU was 1 minute and 13 seconds versus 3 minutes and 13 seconds without. Better than two and a half times faster. This is great news. You got to remember, I'm on a two year old MacBook Pro with an external GPU, which means I do have some room for upgradability on some of these older machines, and I can add a lot more functionality by adding an external GPU to help out my export times. There is one thing I want to point out, and that is it does make a difference what you export out to. So I'm going to switch my export to H.264, and you might be surprised to see the difference. You'll notice on the left-hand side, we have ProRes 4K exporting to ProRes 4K. And on the right side, you'll notice we have ProRes 4K exporting to H.264 4K, our YouTube preset. You'll also notice it's substantially faster on the right-hand side with those two AMD GPUs. That's because it really makes a difference what codecs and effects you have on the timeline and also what your exporting format is, in this case, H.264. You'll also notice that we were really pushing those GPUs at 100% on the right-hand side of the screen, where ProRes to ProRes, we were only pushing the AMD 9100 at about 70%. But still, the overall time and speed gains are amazing. 
so 2.6 times faster with ProRes to ProRes and 4.4 times faster with ProRes to H.264. This is just the beginning of the performance enhancements that our engineering team is starting to put into Premiere Pro. So hang tight, there's more to come.